season with uh, yeah. a little more than two weeks away. Yeah, how it's, exciting it's, for it? it's exciting. I mean, every time this 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 part of the year, like things start to happen really quick, and you know, there's just certain things that, that come along that you realize, like, man, it's it's here. Whether it's you know starting team practice last week, or um, you know, obviously fan fest coming up. Uh, always softball goes a week before us, so they start putting out a lot of stuff on social media about them being a week away. Which means we're too, you know. I mean, so just a lot of things that happen that you really just start to really sink in that man, we're we're here. Um, and it's funny how slow. June to November really goes, and then going like, to blink an eye, you're, you're here in February. So, um, but the guys have been doing a great job. Practices have been great. Like, uh, you know, obviously I have a good group of older guys that um, really lead the way. And, uh, you know, it's just exciting to have that kind of leadership in terms of age and experience. And uh, you know, just this is a good group, and I'm, I'm really excited to go watch them compete. And, Really excited about the guys that we have in the locker room. What are your expectations for this season? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to put expectations on anything. Uh, you're just really trying to go out and compete. You know, I do believe in this group. I believe in their, like I said, their experience, the, the amount of work that they put in, the preparation, um, which just really, really excites me. I think that um, having this type of, um, you know, and our two, three, four hitters are all going to be 23 years old. Like that's just a, a huge plus. Um, that have been through the rigor, that have been through the ups and downs, and, um, and so to to have that kind of leadership, I think, from both sides, um, really gives me uh, a lot of excitement about this season. But at the end of the day, like they also know that um, you just never know what tomorrow brings. Whether they've been through COVID, whether they've been through all the injuries, like um, I think our expectations are just to go out and compete and show everybody what we, what we think we are and, and what we're made of, and, and just to do that on a consistent basis. With the impending move to the Big 12, how do you think that's impacted the recruiting? You know, that they can play in that league? Yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously helped uh, tremendously. Um, you know, it's, again, I think I've talked about it for the last seven years I've been here, that the American just doesn't get the amount of respect that, it, that I feel like it deserves from a baseball standpoint. Um, but I do think, obviously, that being in a Power 5 and being in the Big 12 and conference like that, that powerful in terms of baseball, that it definitely has brought us um, a lot of uh, wins in the recruiting battles that we probably didn't get um, in the first in my first two years. So it's definitely been an uptick, um, you know, just whether it's through the transfer portal or the high school kids. Obviously, you know, I expect that to kind of be better from at least from the transfer portal standpoint as we go into the summer. But uh, really excited about the kids that we've been bringing in, and uh, you know, Ted has done a tremendous job of running that. In terms of the recruiting stuff, and so just, just it's definitely been a plus. And so we're definitely excited, but at the same time, we got a lot to, to worry about right now with the American. Sorry, you're fine. It's okay. Yeah. Um, you get John Rice back, coming back. Um, kind of talk about the expectations you have for him, and just what you're hoping for him. Going yeah, I mean, obviously, he has the ability to to change the game with his defense and his speed, and, and you know, dropped a bunt down in practice the other day, and. and base hit bun and you know it feels like a blink of an eye he's, he's already on first base uh, so I mean there's just a lot of different things that he can bring obviously not playing baseball the last couple of years uh, just trying to get him back into the swing of things um, you know get one you know he spent a lot of time in, in December just trying to get his body right after the, you know, the beating that he takes and um, and then just trying to get get the baseball you know legs back kind of thing and it's just it's just different um, and so uh, he's done a great job though I mean you he obviously is, everyone knows how great of a kid he is and the energy that he brings and, um, you know, the, the, the practices are louder because he's there and um, he just is always um, bringing the juice and so that, that is something that has been, I think, a positive for our team and he just continues to, you just see it every single day, the more comfortable he gets swinging, the more comfortable he gets on the baseball field, like just trying to get that, that timing back, obviously, which in our game is really, really difficult and so but he's a super athlete, so just kind of excited. Uh, excited he's here, but excited to see what he's going to be able to do when, when games are. Have you, have, you talk to Co- have you talked to Coach Miles about the, the yeah. sharing, so to speak, go? Yeah, so it's a good good question. And, you know, obviously John John Rice is going to be up here today, and I, I, I just ask that everybody just stays away from the football questions. I'll answer that question and, and kind of go from there. 
but let him just be a baseball player and, and answer all the baseball questions that we need to. Um, and you can ask a million of those, but I just ask that everybody not bring up any football-related questions at all. Um, uh, Gus and I had worked super close together in the last last six weeks, uh, just coming up with a plan. John Rice will per will participate in both uh, spring ball and and obviously the baseball season. Um, and so, um, you know, obviously exactly how that is working it's just kind of a week-to-week -week thing obviously just trying to figure out their exact schedule with our exact schedule and like put the pieces together but Gus and I have had many conversations about it how we're going to make it work how we're going to try to um, work together on it to make sure that we're doing what's best for, for our program what we're doing best for his program and then obviously most importantly what we're doing best for John Rice so um, but he will participate um, I don't think that there will be a ton of issues uh, with it at all we just all have to be very smart mostly just about keeping them healthy um the rest of it like getting the work in and doing all that kind of stuff like i have no doubt in my mind that it will be a clean um uh, a clean partnership and, and that john rice will be able to do everything that he wants to do uh, you know, to be able to play those got to showcase many of your new additions in fall ball how has the best of the Again, I think that just the leadership that we have, just the age and the maturity that, you know, guys like Ben McCabe and Tom Joseph and Nick Romano and Rudy Gomez and Kyle Kramer, like those guys um, have really uh, been best be. Th those guys just understand the importance of what the locker room needs to be like um, and also understand what their roles are as leaders. Um, and so I think that I'm very pleased with just how quickly the new guys have acclimated and, and really feel I feel like asking the new players just kind of at home they feel and, um, you know that's just a lot about the culture but it's mostly about the older guys in the locker room and how welcoming they are and, you know the, the, the crazy thing about COVID is I mean you got 23 year olds hanging out with 18 year olds I mean it's just it's just a little bit different there's an age gap there so but I think our guys have done a great job of ignoring that and just understanding that we're all here to pull on the same side of the rope and, and just to welcome those guys and get them acclimated and to help them to answer questions to, to push them to to let them know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, not only from our program, but just from a college baseball standpoint. So um, I think it's definitely sped up the process of some of these new guys, whether they've been transfers uh, or whether they've been freshmen, to, to understand what the expectations are for us, and what we're trying to do, and what we need what we need to do in order to, to attain all the goals we want to. When Nick Gotti leaves in December, obviously he hired him, he hired Mike Roth. How did that hire come out? He was extremely successful in the Braves organization. I mean, he's an alum. Yeah. Just talk about that process and what he brings to your team. Yeah, I mean, obviously, really happy for Nick. Um, obviously, I was, I was involved in the whole process, so, you know, it was, I was obviously planning for it, knowing that it could have happened. Uh, but then I just, I just, you know, the only bad thing about it from a timing standpoint is usually that's the holidays or a uh, time with family, and I spent more time on the phone than I did with my family. Um, but I just went to work and just tried to find the best guy that I could. And, um, I, I, I spread a wide net, and um, obviously Mike and I have been friends since I got here, just being a Milan and being a local guy, and um, you know our wives are friends and things like that. So immediately he was on my list, uh, but I went through a thorough search and, and talked to a ton of people, uh, not only just in terms of the job, but just you know, vetting people and trying to figure out the best the best for this team and the best moving forward for the program and, um, and obviously just able to, to talk to Mike and um, obviously cares a lot about UCF, uh, cares a lot about this community that he lives, you know, lives here in Orlando um, his whole life and, uh, you know, Boone High School graduate and, and whatnot. So uh, just has a lot of a lot of love for UCF, a lot of a lot of care and obviously he's had a lot of success developing big leaguers. So, just felt like it was a great fit for us to come in and help these guys continue to get better, continue to do the foundation that, that Nick had really built. Um, it really put us in a good shot to win a championship this year. So uh, been really, really excited. It's been a crazy whirlwind for him, just trying to get acclimated, learn the guys, watch a lot of video, trying to put together, obviously taking some of the things that we had already put in place, just in terms of throwing programs and stuff, but trying to put his his thoughts on it and his spin on things without changing too much for especially this group just that have been so used to you know, kind of put on this path that they've been working on since August or whatnot. So I think they've done a great job, both the players and Mike, of merging those two things together and, and you know, putting us in a good spot here for a green day. Coach, you said, um, you said one through four is 
veteran by age, the rest of your lineup set, or do you still feel Yeah, like I mean, I think everybody, I mean, obviously Tom and, and Ben and, and, and Nick, I mean, have been some of our best hitters the last few years. Uh, but Lex Bodecker, obviously a returner who hit over 300 last year as a freshman. Um, and, uh, you know, but we've got some transfers like Corey Robinson, who came in from the University of Florida, that had, that had probably the best fall of all of our guys that, that obviously is in the mix. And, Andrew Bray is back again, another older guy that, that has been here for a few years and obviously been banged up but healthy now and done a, done a great job. Um, you know, Drew Fro is a really talented freshman that has really stood out uh, over the course um, of this. Um, obviously, Andrew Sundin, uh, who's been hurt, uh, has missed uh, all the fall, but is on his way back. I don't know the date, but I do expect him back um, sooner than later. Hope to have the back full go, maybe before conference starts. Um, I give him a couple weeks, uh, but you know it's kind of a, a day by day thing. Um, so you have a good group. Greg Pate, another freshman that has really stood out. Um, Matt Cedarberg, a transfer. Brady Shannon, another freshman. So I mean, there's a lot of jobs that are still open. Obviously, John Rice. So uh, there's a lot of jobs open. But obviously, having your two, three, four hitters that have hit in, the, in that order, you know, in that part of the order, the middle of the order for the last three or four years, like definitely gives us, you know, that age and experience that, you know, can really anchor a lineup and then we can kind of fit around who we feel like is going to be the best to help us win that day. Coach, what are some things that you guys struggled with last year and uh, improved during the off season? And are you expecting that uh, yeah. from your players this year? Yeah, I man, I think the biggest thing was injuries, you know, and um, we just got crushed. You know, just had to do a lot of a lot of soul searching as the head coach to try to figure out reasons why. And so definitely made some changes internally of trying to figure out, you know, what was gonna be the best for our players to put them in the best spot to not, not allow that to happen again. I think we've done that. Uh, I think the players have done a great job of, of making some changes in terms of some of the things we've implemented to try to make sure that we put them in the best spot to be healthy um, and, and really spent a lot of time to put themselves in those situations. So. I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Is win 35 games last year. Um, when you lose, you know, your your number one, your number two, your closer before the season even starts, you lose, you know, your shortstop for half the year, your your your, your hottest best player in Romano the week three with the ACL. I mean, you're, you're losing five of your best seven guys, and you know, but hopefully, what ends up happening is a guy like Ben Vespi who really had to step up last year and, and go from a kind of a swing guy and a big part of our bullpen to our ace really gain that experience. Uh, guys like Lex Bodecker, who, who got thrown into the fire last year as a freshman, they got all those at-bats and did a great job, or more prepared for that. Um, even uh, guys on the mound, um, like uh, Dominic Castellano, Jacob Marlowe, like they got thrown into the fire big time and, and got really, really huge innings for us um, that they're now more prepared this year because of that. And so, um, you know, in the moment last year, you, you kind of go through where you feel like this is, like everything's going wrong, um, but at the end of the day, you figure God has a plan and, and, and hope that that was preparing us better for this year than it was maybe for last year. It just wasn't my timing, but, but it is. So, uh, but excited about this group. We're, 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 we're really healthy um, and uh, we're in a good spot. We just got to continue to do the things to keep it that way because we can win 35 games with as many injuries as we did last year. I'm, I'm excited to see what we can do this year. How does the team staff look heading into the season? Yeah, you know, obviously, Rudy and Ben really just being the leaders and being the, the, the front end guys uh, have done a tremendous job. Uh, Kyle Kramer uh, at the back end. Najir Victor is a huge transfer from Florida Gulf Coast. It's going to be a big part of this. Um, uh, Zach Bennett, uh, you know, who tomorrow is his one year anniversary from, from Tommy John, uh, is on his way back. He's been throwing bullpens. He should get into some live ABs, live um, inner squads here. This end of this week or early next week, uh, you know, I'm not sure if he'll be ready for opening day, but it won't be far off of that, but he'll be able to throw in, in a live game. Um, Jacob Marlowe, again, has really made some strides from last year, that experience that he got uh, in the starting. Uh, Dom Stagliano, a big transfer of freshman All-American from Stetson, has been been really good for us. Um, getting Zach Chapel, a transfer from North Florida. Uh, and then Cam Leiter, obviously, is, is our big freshman. The, you know, obviously one of the lighter lighter kids, and Alice is uncle, and Jack is his cousin. And, Marcus's cousin, both both in the big leagues, and, and obviously Al. And, um, you know, the family obviously has a rich tradition of baseball, so he, he has done a tremendous job. Uh, really put himself in an opportunity to win a starting job on the weekend. 
has all the talent in the world and um, you know again just going to be one of those young guys that just has to learn but um, the great thing about that is that you have a guys like Rudy and Ben that are, are showing him the way and, and teaching him every day how to handle himself how to have a great routine how to prepare himself and as we get to the season I'm gonna have to rely a lot on those guys as well not only from them pitching but also making sure that they are they're making sure that everyone around them is is getting better and that those guys especially a guy like Cam when he's gonna have days where he fails or doesn't have great days and how does he handle that how does he bounce back um, that, that is going to be a big part of you know obviously my job but at the same time the leaders to behind the scenes when the coaches aren't there making sure that those guys are, are handling themselves the right way to bounce back I feel like your non-conference schedule and how that sets yeah, you up. It's really difficult. Um, whoever whoever's in charge of scheduling should be, be, be in trouble. Uh, but it's a good challenge, and I think again it gets us ready for the American. Obviously, obviously start with Seattle like we always do, which is always it's always a good opening day test. And then um, you know having to go to Clemson and play in a regional type atmosphere against a team that's going to be hungry to prove with their new coach and and you know the. the them not being as good as they probably thought they should be last year, that they're going to be out. You get Georgia Southern, who we take two out of three from last year. They end up hosting a regional top 16 that's probably going to want to come in here and, and prove that last year that we went to their place and it was a fluke and they got something to give us back. Um, and then we got Troy and Dartmouth, who are going to be really, really good. I mean, the Sun Belt has, has been you know, one of the top three or four conferences in the country the last couple of years. So, they're going to be ready to go. We obviously, you know, they took two out of three from us at their place a couple years ago, so we got something to prove for them. And, um, obviously, Dartmouth came in here a couple years ago and took two out of three from us, and they're always a, a, one of the toughest uh, Ivy League teams. And then Maryland, uh, top 15 in the country right now to start the year off. So, um, and they hosted the regional last year. So, and then obviously you've got the Florida States and Miami and, and FAUs and North Florida's like the typical tough midweek games that you know all these kids played against each other for the most part. That, it just adds a different element to the to the game. So uh, the schedule is going to be tough, uh, but if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And, um, and so we got to go out there and just and show everybody what we think we're made of, and uh, do that by going out on Friday night against Siena and just worry about that, and then wake up the next day and do it again. Couple more. Going to take a late season trip up to Ohio, where you not only get to face Cincinnati, but you get to kind of go home and play Wright State and take on Ohio State as well. What does it mean to you to be able to have that on the schedule this season? Um, it's an interesting question, um, and I don't I don't know if I know the answer to that right now. You know, um, obviously in my mind, I guess it, it's kind of cool just to be able to go back and see a lot of people. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just I'm just so focused on our kids trying to win a championship that. You know, I don't really haven't put a ton of thought into it. Obviously, when I scheduled it, like, you know, hey, that'll be cool. And then, you know, you wake up the next day and you worry about trying to get better that day in practice. So, um, you know, there might be some feelings that'll get closer, but to be honest with you, right now, I got so much to work between now and then that uh, it's just really in the back of my mind. How much you know about the Big 12 schedule next year, conference game, you've only been playing with? Uh, not as many, you know, the conference games, like how many you're going to play and all that's going to look like is. Yeah, so we are going to play. Uh, 11 weeks with a bye, so it'll be 10 weeks with a bye. So we we'll have three non-conference weekends, and then you'll start conference play every team will have it because there's an odd number of teams. So there'll be a bye week somewhere in there. Uh, so you'll play 10 conference, so two, two, two teams you won't play. Um, and, uh, but then everyone else you will play. So you'll play 30 conference games. So 30 conference yeah. games, correct. Um, other than that, I don't know what can't tell you. <laughs>